Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about Git and GitHub. So you've probably heard of GitHub before. It's probably somewhere you go to get code for your class projects or share code with other people, but I wanted to take this video and talk about the benefits of having a GitHub account and also talk about the basics of Git. I think that Git can be one of those daunting topics because it seems like there's so many different variations on what could happen. But if we build up a strong foundation, the beginning of which we'll do in this video, then we'll be a lot better set for all these different cases that come down the road. So the first step is pretty obvious. You want to create a GitHub account. So go ahead and do that. Once you do, you'll see a page similar to this one. This is my GitHub account. Now what you want to do is click on your icon up here and click on your profile. And the main unit of GitHub is called repositories, which more informally you can just think of as folders which contain a bunch of code that are related to a certain topic or project or something you're working on. For example, I have repositories for my time series analysis, for scraping data, and so on. For this video, we'll be creating a repository from scratch. So if you've never done this before, go ahead and click on this plus icon, new repository. We're going to be calling this git underscore tutorial. The name is available. Go ahead and create a description. We'll just say this is my git tutorial, just to be simple. We're going to make it public, and then we'll create the repository. So within seconds, you will have your first repository on GitHub, and it looks like this. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually not something you're probably ever going to do again, but we're going to create a new file using GitHub itself. The reason I say that it's not something that's commonly done is people in industry or even personally mostly always use the command line, as we'll do in the bulk of this video, to interact with GitHub. Just because it's cleaner, you have more control, and it's more applicable to the real world. But you do have the option, if you want, to create a new file by clicking on this button directly on GitHub. So go ahead and name the file. We're going to be calling this file math.py. It's a very simple Python file that looks like this. So there's two functions in this file. One is called add. It takes two numbers, and as you might expect, it just wants to add them together. Currently, it's not implemented, and it's my responsibility in this video to implement this. Now, as I might have touched on a couple minutes ago, GitHub is also very useful because it allows you to collaborate with other people, whether those people are members of your team for a class project or just other people on the internet who are working on a similar topic as you. So we're going to say for this example that I have one teammate called Bob, and Bob's responsibility is to implement the function right below called mult, short for multiply, and it just needs to multiply these two numbers together. So this is our file. We're going to go down here. We're going to put a message saying what this file means. So this is created the math.py, let's say, skeleton. We're going to hit commit new file. And within seconds, we have the first file on our first repository on GitHub. So I'm going to click on it, and you see that it's the exact stuff I just wrote. It's even smart enough to realize this is a Python file and gave me nice syntax highlighting. Now, while we could go on just kind of changing this file on GitHub itself, it's not really useful. It's not really the way people are going to do it. And it's not a great idea to keep track of work if everyone on your team is trying to do this all at once. So let's hop over to the command line to continue this video. Now, a very useful tool that I recommend for using GitHub in general is called Git Bash. I will leave a link in the description of this video for where you can get Git bash, but it's basically a way for us to interact with GitHub more easily. It understands all the Git commands, so there's no issues with it not understanding things, and it'll just make our lives a lot easier. So that's what this right window you're seeing here. This is my Git bash, and I'm currently in my desktop, and the left window that you're seeing is where I'm going to be editing that Python file that I just created. So there's kind of a non-obvious question now, which is I have my local setup here. But the code I just wrote is living on GitHub. So how do I get that code from GitHub locally? Now, obviously, I don't want to just copy paste it and put it locally. There has to be a more clean, more elegant way to do this. And as you guessed, if we go to GitHub, go to the main repository called Git Tutorial, click on this code green button here, and go ahead and copy this HTTPS. Then we go back to our git bash, and I'm going to show you the first git command we're going to use, which is typically the first git command you ever use during a project, which is git clone, and then you go ahead and paste that URL. Now, every time we do a git command, I do want to fully explain what it does so that we build a good foundation. What this is doing is saying that there is a repository online called so-and-so, this URL, and this is the one we just created. 
I want you to clone that repository, which means all the files that live in that repository, I want you to put them locally in some local folder so that I can work on these files locally and then later on put them back onto GitHub. So I go ahead and execute this. It might take a couple seconds, but it's done. Now we see that I can CD into a folder with the same name as my repository. So I can CD git tutorial. Notice I am inside that git tutorial folder, which was just created. If I do ls here, notice the only file in there is called math.py. And if I do cat math.py, cat just prints out the contents of a file. We see that it's literally the same file that I just created online. So again, this first command, git clone, takes a remote git repository. You'll see this word remote come up a lot and clones it locally so that I can work on this thing locally. And then later on, we'll see how to get those changes back onto GitHub. So now let's open this file in the editor so that I can more easily change it. Okay, so now we're in business. We have our file that we got from GitHub and now we can begin making changes to it. So again, the first function is the one I need to implement. So let me go ahead and just implement this function. So I'm going to say, okay, if I want to add X and Y, I would just return X plus Y, right? So this is very simple. So I go ahead and just save that file. Now, this might be super obvious to a lot of people, but I want to go back to GitHub and I want to explicitly note that if I click on that file here, those changes have not been reflected. Of course, they haven't been reflected yet because I haven't put the code back on GitHub, but I just want to make it clear that what I'm doing now is being done locally not any changes being reflected on GitHub just yet. So the next question then is, of course, how do I take these changes and push them back to GitHub? So that's going to be done using a series of Git commands that we'll see next, which usually occur in succession. So this is a common Git paradigm you're going to see. So going back to Git bash, the first thing we're going to do is hit Git status. So this tells us what's been modified since the last time I pulled the changes remotely. And correctly, it finds out that math.py, this is the file that's been modified. If I had more files, then some of them might be modified and some of them might not be. This is a good way to check what you might want to include in your next push back to GitHub. So I want to include math.py. The way I do that is by doing git add math.py. Now to understand what that command does, let's just do git status again. So in the official terminology of Git, what I have done now is staged the changes that are in math.py. Notice it went from being colored red here to being colored green here. What that means is that these changes are now being staged in order to be committed. That would imply that the next command is git commit, which is exactly what we do. We say git commit. You always want to do dash M and then include a message saying what you changed, because that's going to allow people who are working with you to understand what you did between one iteration of the code and the next that made it different or better or fix something. So I'm going to say that I implemented the add function and I go ahead and enter. It says one file change. I'm going to do git status again. We see that there is nothing to commit because I just committed that file. The last thing I would want to do is git push in order to publish my local commits. Now, I'm not going to go back to GitHub right now, but if you go back to the right now, you'll see that these changes still are not reflected online on GitHub because what I've done is added the file, I've staged it, and then I've committed the file. In order for these changes to get pushed remotely online, I need to explicitly say git push. Now, this is the command that is going to take those changes that I made locally and push them back online. And this is what just happened right now. So now let's go back and visit our GitHub. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page here. Notice that now those changes have been reflected online. This function has been implemented online. So before this was not implemented and now it is implemented. So that is kind of the basic control flow of how you take a file that's living online, pull it locally, make some changes locally, add, commit, and then push it back remotely. Now we're going to add another layer of complexity. As we were saying before, GitHub and Git are ways for teams to collaborate with each other on the same pieces of code. Because although for some class projects or just personally, you might be working on the piece of code by yourself, so there's nothing to worry about. Usually, if you go in the real world, you're going to be working on the same piece of code with other people, and you might be responsible for your own part, for example. So that's kind of built in here. Now there's another person, Bob, who needs to implement this multiply function. So for the next minute or so, let's pretend that we are Bob. And Bob, in order to simulate being Bob, I'm going to edit it just on this website itself instead of pulling anything. So I'm going to click this pencil. Again, I am Bob right now. And Bob says, OK, I have some work to do. I need to implement the multiply function. So I'm just going to do OK. So I'm going to return x times y. And then I'm going to go ahead and commit that. So I'm going to say I implemented the 
mult function, commit my changes. And we see now those changes have been reflected. But now something very interesting has happened. Now let's go back to being ourselves. We are not Bob anymore. So let me go back. Notice that those changes that Bob made are not reflected locally for me because I haven't pulled the most recent changes yet. So let's see what kind of trouble I can get into if I don't explicitly pull those changes but try to continue making my own changes to my own function here. So let's say I realize that, oh, actually, you know what? I only want to add these two things if they're both integers. So let me put a check in there for that. So I'm going to put if x, if type x equals equals int and type y equals equals int, then you are going to do this. Otherwise, we are going to return none. Okay, so this is just adding these two things if they're integers and otherwise returning none. So I say I'm going to go through the same three steps. I'm going to add, commit, and push, and it should be fine just like it was before, right? So I'm going to do git add, put the name of the file I want to add. That was totally fine. Git commit, put the message. So I'm going to say implement type checking for add. That's perfectly fine. Now here's where the trouble happens. If I do git push, Instead of getting a nice clean message saying that I pushed all your changes back to the remote, what we get is this really nasty looking error. And you might see this error come up a lot. And what it usually means is that somebody else on your team or who has access to your repository made some changes in the repository that you have not yet pulled locally. So there's now this kind of conflict between what you have locally and what's living online. The fix for this, at least in this case, is relatively simple. What we need to do is first pull the remote changes. We're going to do git pull. Git pull takes all the changes that are living on this repository remotely and gets them locally. We won't bother with this message for this video, so we're going to quit here. And now we see that we have successfully pulled the changes. Now I want you to notice very closely what I'm going to do. I'm going to click back into my editor here, and I want you to notice what happens to this multiply function. So I'm going to click on the editor. Notice that the multiply function got updated to Bob's changes. So again, the story of what we've done so far is that we have made some changes locally. We tried to push them, but it was unsuccessful because there were already changes remotely that somebody else had made. So we were forced to pull those changes, and that's where we are right now. So the last step is to push the changes that we were initially trying to push. So now we can successfully say git push. We don't have to do git add and commit again. That's already done. All that's left to do is git push. And now we should be successful because there's no discrepancy between what we have locally and what we have remotely besides the changes that we are trying to push. So now let's go back to GitHub, refresh this page. And we notice that everyone's changes are living here peacefully. So we have Bob's changes and we have our changes here. Now, the last thing I want to show you in this Git basics video is the power and the advantage of using this concept in GitHub and Git called branches. Now, the way that I implemented my changes here isn't exactly ideal. That's not the way Git wants you to do it. It is possible. We just saw that this works out just fine. But using a concept called branches is going to organize your work a lot better, especially when you have several members on your team and you're all doing work simultaneously. If you don't use branches, you can get into some messes. So before writing any code for this, let me explain conceptually what the idea of a branch is. So currently, the branch that we are on is called main. The way you know that, the easiest way is by looking at this word that's in parentheses. It's called main. Another way you can see it is by doing git branch. See, the only branch that's here right now is called main. So everybody right now, for the part of this video that came before, me and Bob, we're all working on this branch called main. We were all putting our changes there. Now suppose that I want to make some further changes to my add function. Let's say that I want to add some comments so that whoever's reading this function better understands what it means. But I also know that other members of my team, such as Bob and other people, might be editing this file as well. And I don't want my work to be committing to the same branch that they're working on. So what I'll do is I'm going to create a separate branch, which is going to be called something descriptive. And the command to do that would be git checkout dash b and you put the name of your branch. Typically the name of your branch is very descriptive and saying the exact change that you're going to make. So what we're going to do is git checkout dash b add comments to add function. And so we see it now says switch to a new branch add comments to add function. 
which you can confirm by this being in the parentheses. You can further confirm it by doing git branch. You see that now we are on the branch called add comments to add function. Now the reason that this is a powerful and useful concept is that now I can make whatever changes I need to make locally here. And those changes are made to my new branch, not the main branch. And whenever I'm done making those changes, I can merge that new branch back into wherever the main branch may be, however many commits have been made to it by other members of my team. So kind of the way I like to think about it is everyone on your team is working in a very busy workshop and the center of the workshop is the busiest area. Instead of you also working in the center of the workshop and getting in the way of everyone's work, you kind of go to the corner of the workshop, do a little bit of work on your own table, and then bring your work back to the center. So it keeps everything clean, it keeps everything more modular, and we run into less issues this way. So this is a practice that I would highly encourage you to get into. Now, how do we actually do this? So it's not that difficult. We are now on that branch, as we just said. So let's go ahead and add those comments. So we're gonna say, if x and y are both integers, then add them, otherwise return none. Perfect. So now we have made the changes that we want to make. And now how do we get those changes back onto the main branch? Well, the first part of what we're going to do is the same as what we did before. We're going to add those changes. So git add math.py, git commit dash m, put the message. I'm going to say added some comments to the add function. Great. And now we're not going to do git push here. What we're going to do now is switch back to the main branch. So we're going to say git checkout main. So notice now we are not on that new branch we created. We are now back on the main branch. And what we want to do is merge our new branch into the main branch. More intuitively, what we're doing is saying, take the changes that I made on this other branch and include them back into the main branch. So the way we do that is git merge and the name of the branch that we were just working on. So add comments to add function. Go ahead and press enter. So let's fast forward, one file change to insertion. And the place we're at right now is as if we made all these changes to the main branch itself, which means that the only last thing to do is git push. And the changes that we made on our separate branch will get pushed into the main branch now. And we refresh this page again. Notice that our changes, which is this comments, have been added to the main branch. And the last part of the story here, and the last thing we'll do in this video is delete the branch that we are working on. So it's good practice to always get rid of the branch because you are done doing the work on it. If you need to do more work, you can create a new branch with a more descriptive name for that new issue. So you go ahead and do git branch dash D for delete. Go ahead and put the name of the branch you wanna delete. That branch is gone. If we do git branch, notice that there's only one branch here. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, basically just showing you GitHub why it's helpful to have a GitHub, and then show you some basic and very, very popular and useful commands in Git. Okay, so hopefully you learned something in this video, and I will see you next time.